Today we're talking about my camera bag. Well, not just the bag, but also what's inside it. So from the time I created my previous camera bag video, pretty much everything changed. So yeah, let's see what we got here. So this setup I'll be showing you today is what I take with me on a stock photo shoot if I shoot both photos and videos. Obviously, if I know I'll be only shooting photos, I take some stuff out because this thing is just too heavy. So first, the camera bag. This is Low Pro Protactic 450 AW. It's a great bag, I have it for around 5 years now and if I would be buying today, I would still buy this one, except that I would buy newer version of it. It's very big and it fits all my stuff inside. Uh, so this outer part has these straps where you can easily attach some accessories like my Sony noise cancelling headphones or something else which is very convenient. It also has some small pockets around which is great if you want to store some random small things. But yeah, let's see what's inside it. Okay, so the interior is very big, very spacious and that's what I love about this bag. Here it has a laptop sleeve where I can easily fit my 16 inch MacBook Pro M1. So this is my main computer, I do all my photo and video editing on this machine and it's just great. I don't carry this with me all the time because I don't usually need it on the photo shoot but it's nice to have a space in the back where you can put it if you need it. Usually what I have here on the shoot is my iPad Air which I use a lot as a prop on my stock photo shoots. Okay, uh, let's move to the camera gear. If you saw my camera back video from three years ago, you know I was shooting with Nikon. But because of this camera here, I switched my entire system to Sony. And why Sony, not Canon for example? Well, I was deciding between Canon R5 and this Sony A7S III, but there were two main reasons why I went with Sony instead of Canon. First thing, in the beginning Canon had problems with overheating. Uh, I think they corrected that with firmware because I know my brother moved to Canon and he didn't have any problems with overheating, but yeah, that was one reason. And the second reason was the price. I could get this Sony A7S III plus this Sigma 2470 f2.8 for pretty much the same price as I would get Canon R5 body only. Also for Sony there are some awesome Sigma lenses out there and they cost less than half of the price of Canon RF lenses. And there are still no Sigma lenses for Canon RF mount. But otherwise those are both great cameras and like I said my brother switched to Canon and he's loving it. Obviously I use this camera for video because it's made for video. It only shoots 12 megapixel images which is not ideal so I haven't shot any images with it. It's a great camera, it shoots 4K at 120 frames per second and also Full HD at 240 frames per second and focus is amazing even if you're shooting in slow motion. Uh, low light performance, well that's just outstanding. If you're shooting indoors for example and you want to shoot in slow motion then you'll have to shorten that shutter speed. When you do that you have to raise your ISO and you will get a noisy image. But with this camera you can push your ISO to 12800 and all the noise will just go away which is amazing for the low light situations. What I have here on this camera is this small rig camera cage which is great for attaching some accessories. For example, I added this nato rail here, which I used to attach this handle, for example. I can just slide it in, secure it with this knob here, and that's it. I can also connect this cable to the camera, and now I can start and stop recording with this button here. I have another nato rail here, which I used to attach my ninja monitor. So, I have another monitor holder here which slides right into it and I can just secure it with this thing. And that's it. And now I have a nice handheld camera setup. Yeah of course I'll link all these items down in the description. 
if you want to check them out. Oh, and if I would be buying camera cage right now, Small Rig just released their new camera cage. It's called Rhinoceros and it looks really good. So I would definitely go with that one. Yeah, because here it's sometimes hard to press this record button because of this thing here. So yeah, maybe I should replace, huh? Hmm. Anyway, uh, the good thing here is that I can also use this monitor without this arm. I can just unscrew this and this and I can put my camera monitor here and that's it. So yeah, depends on the situation. I only use this Ninja as an external monitor not for recording. I stopped using this as a recorder since my MacBook can now handle all those H.264, 265 files without any problems and also the size of these files is much smaller. Okay, next thing, the lens I'm using for video most of the time is this Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8. It's a great lens, I love it, but for photos, for example, the autofocus is not the fastest so if i would be shooting a lot of sports i would definitely go with sony g master version of it but i don't shoot a lot of sports and also i usually don't use this lens for taking photos i mostly shoot my photos with primes because i just love to shoot at that f 1.4 or 1.2 because i just love that background blur okay Okay, uh, the next camera I have here is this Sony A7 Mark IV. So yeah, this is the camera I use to shoot photos. I bought it because the autofocus is great, much better than in their previous cameras. It has 33 megapixels, which is enough. And you can very easily switch from photo to video mode. And you can also decide which settings the camera should carry from one mode to the other, which is pretty cool. This camera also shoots 4K video at 60 frames per second, although there's a crop when you're using this frame rate, but still very usable. So even if I have to take just one camera with me, this camera is great for everything. Also, the color science in this camera is much better than in their previous cameras, but still, if I was only shooting photos, I still prefer Nikon over the Sony because, I don't know, it's just so much easier to get good looking photos with Nikon. But with these Sony cameras, you have to play around much more in post-production to get the same result. I'm not sure if that's just because I'm used to Nikon because I was using it for 10 years or just Nikon has so much better colors. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I wanted to have one system so I have the same lenses for both photo and video shooting. So yeah, I'll just have to deal with that. The lens I have here is Sigma 35mm f1.4 and this is the lens I use the most. So this is the old version of the lens. It was actually made for DSLR cameras but they released a new version which is specifically made for mirrorless cameras. That one probably has much better faster autofocus which is great but since I have this one I'm not sure if it's worth switching. Still a great lens, very sharp but Maybe for sport shooting it's not ideal. Probably I'll be buying the new version or maybe even G Master version of it because I also like to shoot video with 35mm and to have one lens on this photo camera and the other one on my video camera would be great so I'm not switching all the time. Okay, let's see some other lenses I use. This is Sony 70-200 f2.8 G Master lens and it's awesome. I just love this lens when I'm shooting outdoors, for example, from a little bit further away. Uh, the autofocus is extremely fast and the bokeh is amazing. Unfortunately, I just bought this lens a little bit before they released version 2, but this lens is so awesome that I don't know what they improved there. Okay. Next one, I have this Sony 50mm f1.2 G Master lens. I haven't really used this focal length a lot before buying this lens, but now when I have it, I just love it. Right now, it's my second most used lens. That 1.2 aperture is just so good and of course all the things like sharpness, autofocus and everything is just 
amazing, like you would expect from a G Master lens. Okay, another lens I have here is this Sigma 14 to 24 mm f 2.8. This lens is great for wide shots and if you move closer to your subject to get that a little bit different perspective. I actually use it more than I thought I will and it's just great. The downside here is that you can't put a filter in front because of this front element. If you want to use anti-filters with this lens, you have to buy some special ones which go here in the back. Okay. I have another camera in my separate camera bag and that is Sony A7R4 with which I'm actually filming this right now. I used to shoot photos with that camera until I got this a7 IV, but now I use it when I have a second photographer on my shoot and then she would use that camera. Or sometimes I take it with me if I need more megapixels because that camera has 61 megapixel sensor, but usually these 33 megapixels are more than enough. Also another lens that I have in that separate camera bag is Sigma 85mm f1.4 but yeah, I'm just not using it so often, so that's why it's there. So, uh, some other stuff that I have in my camera bag. First, ND filters. So, I use this Freewell ND filters. This is, I think, 7-in-1 system or something. It looks like this, and what we have inside is... Uh, you have one-stop ND filter, one-stop ND filter with mist, then you have two to five stops, six to nine stops, both with mist or without mist. And then you have circular polarizer and five stop ND with a circular polarizer. Uh, so yeah, it's great and it's nice because you can easily put filters on and off because everything is magnetic. I also filmed a video about these filters probably a year and a half ago, uh, but I didn't edit it and publish it. so. Yeah, now it's so old that I don't know if it makes sense to edit it now. So, yeah, what do you think? Let me know if you're interested. So, yeah, I mainly use these filters, but the color shift when you're going from one filter to the other is uh, quite noticeable. So, if you're using more filters on one shoot, you'll have to correct that in post. So, yeah, if I know I'll need better quality, I also use Polar Pro Peter McKinnon version of this uh, variable ND filters. Uh, okay, uh, what else? So, yeah, obviously batteries. I have three extra for Sony and two for Ninja. Also SD cards, so nothing new here, same as before. I also have this multi-tool with screwdrivers, just in case if I need something. I have HDMI cables, cleaning cloths for lenses, and then I have some velcro straps if I need to tie the cables or something, and I also have some cleaning wipes to clean surfaces like uh, iPad or computer screen, and yeah. That's pretty much it, I think. Sometimes, if I need, I also take this SSD drive with me. Uh, so, this is SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. I also use this to edit all my photos and videos from. So, yeah, really good, really fast. Uh, yeah, maybe one more thing. Uh, so, these days I shoot most of my videos handheld, but if I need more stable shots, I use my Zion Weevil S gimbal and I just put it here. And if I need a tripod, I use this Peak Design Travel tripod, I think it's called, and this one also goes here and you can just clip this and that's it. So yeah, it's really small, compact and I love it. Mm, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed and if you want to learn some more stuff about stock photography, click on this playlist right here or subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos and stay awesome, keep shooting and I'll see you in my next video.